Riku taking Zoo over Tempo Mage. Uh, but still a lot of series left to play, and we're going to move into game number two. It's Hunter versus Druid. And the Hunter from Aaron is relatively standard as far as uh, these days go. Uh, one difference being that it has cut uh, one Call of the Wild, I believe, and there's a Ragnaros, the Fire Lord, uh, in its stead. But other than that, pretty standard mid-range Shaman list. Or sorry, mid-range Hunter list. Yep, I uh, love the Tundra Rhino inclusion. I think it works really well with things like the Kindly Grandmother. It tends to be a little bit more aggressive because you have those extra one-minute plays, things like Argent Squire, which you see Aaron is keeping. You also have tracking to help dig through your deck a little bit more efficiently in case you need to find the right res uh, answer at the right time. I don't mind. Aaron's going to start things off with an Argent Squire turn one. Chonsu on the Druid doesn't have um, too much out of the ordinary. He's pretty much got the usual stuff. You know, the one flexible spot, of course, is things like do you have two Fail Rages? Do you play the Mulch? Um, do you have an Ancient of War? And it seems like uh, Chonsu has opted to play Harrison Jones and Ragnaros in his Druid list, which uh, he's got a lot of ramp right now. He's going to plot his turns. What do you think is the best course of action to to build for a better future, TJ? Well, Wow, growth, 2016. <laughs> I was going to go with for a better future. I was going to go with Fandral. Yeah, turn one Fandral. Yeah. What can Hunter really do to punish that? Quick shot doesn't kill. Nothing, nothing. really. Yeah, nothing. The only thing is that he doesn't have, uh, basically, if he Fandraled, his turn two would almost 100% of the time be wild growth. Um, right. Unless he drew a wrath off the top. So it's not what Hunter can ha can use to deal with it that turn. It's what Hunters can use to deal with it over two turns, considering you won't get any value uh, out of the Fandral immediately. Um, right. And he, he keeping on to both innervates gave him a little bit of flexibility because essentially no matter what he draws, he's going to be able to play. And uh, now he has the opportunity opportunity to either innervate out an Azure Drake or maybe even innervate out a Nourish. Well, I mean, I think uh, Azure Drake still does a lot of what you want it to do. If your opponent removes, he spends almost his entire turn removing, guaranteed, because Eagle Horn Bow, which he only has one of, a kill command, a quick shot, commits a lot of that mana, if not all of it. Um, and you, you know, I, I don't think I hate that play. I also don't mind nourishing for crystals. Your opponent had a really slow turn, and it's very clear that Azure Drake and Vandral will need to have some more power behind it besides just playing it. You want to have the Wrath, you want to have the Living Roots. That really makes those cards much more effective when you pair it with Vandral and Azure Drake. Yeah, he's hovering over the Innervate. I can imagine he's just going to go with the Drake here. Whoa, nope. Okay, so he's going with the greedy play of what you were saying. You know, Innervate the Vandral, next turn Innervate Nourish, draw three cards, gain two crystals. It can get punished by one outcome. And that outcome is not going to happen. It is the Misha. Oh, sorry, the uh, the Leoc, excuse me. Uh, I was talking about Hover, of course, being able to, to kill it. Dan, it's really interesting because now he's essentially almost guaranteeing that he floats a mana for two turns in a row, which sort of negates the effect, uh, almost negates the effect of one of those interfaces. Uh, it, unless he, when he nourishes, or when he innervates Nourish next turn, if he picks up a Raven Idol or a Living Roots. He's got four of those in his deck, and he would have, what, 24 cards remaining after his draw for next turn? So uh, that would be a one in six, but he'd pick up three, so a little bit higher chance than that. That's not that high of a chance to pick up one of those one drops, I don't think. I'm just going to go ahead and trust you, TJ, that you are very smart. And that you calculated correctly. Uh, oh, I did those draws. I didn't calculate correctly, actually. It's like one in between one and five and one and six. Thirty-three mana worth drawn in the past four cards. Oh, well, I guess you can reduce it through a nice little uh, rebate program, if you will. The more spells you play, the cheaper you get. Arcane Giants. It's a very nice program that the Malagos Druids are putting out these days. But Chonsu still can hero power and eliminate the Argent Squire. I think the debate is how he chooses to attack here. If he wants to kill um, the Argent Squire or the Leoc. But if he kills the Leoc, then he's almost certain that his Vandra will die. But then again, there's nothing else remaining. Yeah, I so, think his play yeah. next turn is slated for Arcane Giant uh, almost regardless. Yeah. So... 
Uh, that's the one thing about going with this line of play. He's he's ramped a lot. You know, Aaron's on four mana. Next turn, Chensu will be all the way on seven mana. So, uh, Infestable versus a an eight eight is not the best situation. Right. Unless if your you name is Aaron and you're from Singapore. Well, you do you do have Deadly Shot in the deck, so there is that possibility of drawing that uh, one card to destroy the giant. However, you're most likely not going to see that, so you have to plan around that. Um, however, I don't <clears throat> I don't feel like most players account for this. No, not a lot of players are keeping track of how cheap opponents' giants are. Yeah, that's true. You just hope that they don't have it. You have to count every single spell pretty meticulously, and then you have to sort of count their cards to see, you know, what how many cards they've been keeping in their hand the whole time. Um, can be tough, but this is rough. Uh, he can't even deal with it, even if he Tundra Rhinos and trades everything in. Because he Tundra Rhino, trade the 3-3 three, three Wolf in, then trade the 2-1-1s one, in, and then trade the Tundra Rhino in, and the Arcane Giant would still be an 8-1. Yeah, that's uh, really annoying for Aaron to deal with. Most likely, he has to just ignore that Giant as opposed to set up for anything. Sometimes you attack into minions in anticipation to trade into it the following turn. Probably not advisable from this situation for Aaron. Probably gonna jam a toad. Jam a toad? <laughs> I've jammed my toe many times. I don't, know, I don't know about what jamming a toad means. I don't have frog with my morning toast. That's what the kids are calling it these days, bro, Dan. <laughs> you gotta stay hip. Yeah. You're, I know a, we're, you're I, a huge toad, TJ. I know, I know we're getting old, but we gotta stay up with what these, these young Hearthstone kiddos are doing nowadays, and they're jamming toads 100% of the time. Actually, he chooses the rhino. Well, let's see. He said rhino to your play. <laughs> <laughs> we call that slapping a rhino. <laughs> Interesting. Just choosing to play the most mana efficient as possible. What do you think about that Thunder Rhino play? Any uh, it guarantees. Uh, when, when else are you going to play that Thunder Rhino, to be honest? Your, your, your plays are effectively slated for a while. The only other time I see him playing would be like turn seven. Yeah. But you, it's hard to. You know, say on turn seven, you'll be able to play a Tundra Rhino and a huge Toad that can charge. Um, that would, you know, be a good play onto any specific board. So, uh, one thing that it'll do it is it'll guarantee a trade almost, because okay. you can't leave the Tundra Rhino up, especially going into turn six, where you know the threat of High Main being able to charge and the Hyenas being able to charge uh, if the High Main was traded in, it's too risky. So, since he knows that he's playing High Main next turn, he's just getting it out to, you know, maybe. Uh, either guarantee that a trade happens, or if a trade doesn't happen, guarantee that he gets huge value out of that high main. The Mark plus the second giant is a very powerful tempo play, able to set just huge stats onto the board. I was also contemplating whether or not Innervate would be valid, because then you have Maligos in the hand, but with no spells to combine it with, seems a little fruitless. Aaron has that Savannah high main, and like you were saying, I felt like maybe Tundra Rhino turn seven made sense, but if the Tundra Rhino served as a 2-8, or in this case, a 2-10. We put those, of course, in air quotes, because it's not those stats. But if it takes 10 damage, it might as well have gained you 10 health, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. well, High main is usually a great card on turn six that has an above average power level uh, for how early in the game it comes. But not in this situation. Because there's an 8-8 and a 10-8 on the other side of the board. That's 18 damage staring him down. Chinsu has uh, Azure Drake swipe even uh, if he wants. So some good trades. But I, I can't imagine, especially since Deadly Shot would have been played 100% by this stage in the game, uh, that much uh, trading will or should happen, I suppose, with that much damage on the board. Yeah, I think the one thing that might go through Chonsu's mind is he might end up playing Drake Swipe instead of the Malikos because of how low his health is. It's not even that low if you really think about it. 18 is still above the halfway point, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're, you're not you're not that close to dying, but when you have a high main on the board and you have kill command possibilities with Eagle Horn Boast, the, the damage racks are pretty fast. Yeah, actually, I didn't even look at his health when thinking of that. So uh, I think maybe Drake swipe, just maybe trade 8 into 3-3 three, three, and then swipe the high main and then just go face with the 10-8. Yeah, then you're leaving two hyenas, but I guess two hyenas is... <laughs> I guess a 10-8. You're not going to be worried too much, I guess. Yeah, you really don't want to throw 10 damage into that. Mm -hmm. And now there's really not much deadly shot! Yeah, uh, so unleash the hounds. 
No, you, you still don't have a guarantee clear. That's awkward. Well, I think that just means you're trading into the 8-5 and then ripping Deadly Shot and hope it hits the 10-8. Yeah, or maybe uh, you just rip the Deadly Shot. No. Yeah, I would I would definitely want to kill the center Arcane Giant, the 8-5 first with the Unleashed the Hounds plus the Hyenas. First, prior to Deadly Shotting, I think that is the optimal sequencing, so that way you can increase the chances of killing the 10-8. That 10-8 is threatening to your game at this point. Or maybe you guarantee that you kill an Arcane Giant with Deadly Shot, so you kill the 4-4. Four four. But in the op, uh, I guess I guess that could be the case too. So you so that the less there's less average damage being dealt. That way. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's um, I think that's too optimistic. I think you have to just go for the Deadly Shot here. 50% outcome to hit the right target, Ooh. and Deadly Shot has just not been good against these big targets when there's multiple options on the board here. We saw yesterday RDU in the situation where he needed to land an important deadly shot. And he also missed. Granted, Hunter's direct removal like that on big minions is limited. A deadly shot is one of the best. All, not to mention also deals with all these stealth targets such as the Gadget Auctioneer or the odd choice of things like Strength or Tiger. Mm. Yeah. So Azure Drake plus another swipe could be the play here to put Aaron all the way down to just three health. Yep, Living Roots is actually lethal. Oh, Moon one fire, damage off. Not quite. Yeah, I, just, I think you still just swipe and then hit your opponent. Put him down to three. And, of course, um, I wouldn't even mind Moon Firing, but, of course, you have the Maligos Moon Fire next turn. Everything seems good in Chonsu land. I wouldn't blame him if he uh, just kind of end the turn early instead of actually letting it rope. He did. Out. He did. Surprise, surprise. He's been doing it multiple times throughout the series. Aaron, not really much to do. I think he's just going to concede, and that's a 1-1 tied series. Yeah, that one, Chonsu just got so